Price and I'm the Education Manager for Friends of the Boundary Waters and today we're going to be exploring some of the animals of the Boundary Waters by talking a bit about their adaptations. By observing these characteristics we can tell more about what the animal is eating, what their habitat is like, and how they fit into the ecosystem. All right so I've got an animal artifact with me today that I want to share with you and we're going to try to figure out what it came from. So here is my artifact here. We're going to start off by making some observations about this artifact. Now that we've gathered some observations, we're going to start by getting more data using some resources. In order to tell what animal we have, we're going to take a closer look at their eyes. In particular, they talk about monocular vision and binocular vision. Monocular vision is just a long word for just seeing with one eye. So your side vision here, right now I can only see my hand with this eye. Same with that one, side vision over there. Animals that have a lot of monocular vision have a really wide range of vision, but they often can't see very well with both eyes in front of that. Now, if you look over on the other side, you'll see an animal, an owl, that has a lot of binocular vision, meaning they see with both eyes. This helps them lock eyes on their prey and be able to stalk and catch their meal. So we can actually see this on our skulls. When you're holding an herbivore skull in front of you, you'll notice its eyes seem like they're not quite looking at you. They might be spread out on the sides of their skull. But if you're holding a carnivore or omnivore skull in front of you, you'll really see those two eyes staring right at you. So if we take a look at our mystery skull here, you'll probably notice that these eyes are staring pretty much right at the camera. So we would put this skull into the omnivore carnivore category. All right, now we're moving on to the teeth. First, we're gonna look at the front teeth. Canines are used for puncturing and tearing meat. Um, carnivores and omnivores will have big canines. Um, and the canines are those big things we observed earlier. So I can already see right off the bat, this has got pretty big canines. I can still put it in the carnivore and omnivore categories. Now, the back teeth is where we can really tell the difference between a omnivore and a carnivore. With an omnivore's molars, it'll still, on a lot of animals, still be really pointy, but it will, for the most part, be pointy ridges that are um, over a flatter base. Whereas a carnivore molars, you're gonna see really big peaks and valleys. Let's take a close look at our animal's teeth here. So we've got one more resource to add to our collection of data about our skull. So here are some common carnivores of the boundary waters to help us figure out what this is. Feel free to pause and read about some of these animals, but what we're going to be gathering data on is the skull size. So we've got to do some measuring. Okay, so there's our measurements. Now remember, animals, just like people, come in all shapes and sizes. So our measurements might not be exactly what the um, average or approximate measurements might be for these animals, but we're going to see if we can match it to the closest one here. You might have come to the conclusion that the bobcat is our closest measurement here. And we're gonna double check our answers because we've collected a lot of data. And we have a lot of evidence to back up our claim right now, but we just wanna make sure, but I do have some pictures of a bobcat skull today. So we've got bobcat, a carnivore. Here are some of those photos now. Let's set it side by side with our skull and see what we think. Thank you everybody for helping us solve the mystery of our bobcat skull. Have a great day. Woo!